box office numbers at an all-time low. The movie theater industry is dying. We're going to talk about it. Then, in our main case, we're going to stay home with a good book. Is it okay to write a story about your friend's life without telling them? Stay tuned for our verdicts. What you are listening to is real. The parties involved are not cool. They are actual geeks with a case pending in the court of public opinion. The party's case has been dismissed, and the dispute will be settled here on our podcast. There will be no lawyers. There will be no witness testimony. The judge's decisions are final. Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, story of my life. Hello and welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial. For just five bucks a month, you can gain early access to our audio and video episodes, plus our bonus show, Geeks on Trial Sidebar. And if you would like to help us out for free, please rate us five stars over on Apple Podcasts. Podcast and give us a like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash at geeks on trial. That'd be very <laughs> and nice. If you'd like to you. do absolutely nothing, just keep listening and yep. everything's gonna work out all right, yep. baby. At some point in time, things will just mesh together and become awesome. We're here for you. We're here to help you out. You had a tough work week, you had a tough weekend, you have a tough life. Everything sucks. It's going to hell. The world's on fire. But the Geeks on Trial episode is here for 45 minutes to an hour. You've got nothing to worry about. But you want to hear some good news? The box what office is, is failing. Oh, no. Wait, that's not good. Uh, well, it is for people who don't, you know, the streamers, streaming people love failing box office. Well, I'm glad that you brought this up. I don't know that that's true. I'm glad that you brought <laughs> this up because we're going to talk about it a little bit before we get into the case for today. Uh, listeners and viewers of the show mm-hmm. may know mm-hmm. that uh, we do a little thing called the Summer Movie Wager. In fact, on our Patreon, you can watch our full-length 90-minute episode where we talk about our predictions for this year. So in light of that, we're, we're kind of following, keeping up with the box office, the movies, Summer movie season. How are things doing? What's doing better than something else? Uh, so far, we are now about a month into the summer movie right. season. So some of the biggest titles have yet to drop, but we've seen the Planet of the Apes, mm-hmm. The Fall Guy, mm-hmm. uh, Garfield, mm-hmm. Furiosa. I don't know. They sound like pretty big movie titles to me. Those all and sound if. like winners. Oh, If came out? <laughs> 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 yes, it did. Yes, it did. Uh, so you know, there's we've been dipping our toes in, in some in mm. some big summer movies, but the the numbers have not been good. Have you ever been a toe dipper when you go to the beach? You dip your toes in first before you get into the ocean. I do. It's a nice testing. Go ahead. Have you been looking at my uh, Pornhub search? Yeah. Terms. Yeah, you're using <laughs> my computer. It's very weird. <laughs> well, mine. I don't want to get viruses on mine. Well. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, my keyboard's uh, too sticky now. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's keep it PG for okay. the kids this week. Okay. Speaking of PG, the mm. box office. Mm-hmm. Here's some of the here's some of the results. First first the fall guy did uh well under people's uh hopes and expectations, really not doing very well. But you can keep writing uh, it in. Thank you. Planet <laughs> Planet I mean I kind of no, no. I want planet, you to keep rubbing it in. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Don't make that noise. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes did. It's doing not bad. That's actually faring, I think, the mm-hmm. best out of all of these movies. Uh, but then the real big thing hit with Furiosa, the new Mad Max movie, which uh, reportedly has the lowest number one Memorial Day box office numbers in a long time, if not ever. Which is might wild. Be ever. Because uh, <laughs> I've said this on the show before and whatever. I used to work for. A, a small little mom and pop movie theater called AMC. Don't know if you've ever heard of them. And, AMCA, yeah, AMCA, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, you know, they would always make sure every employee was there on this holiday weekend. We'd have every mm. employee there for Christmas and every employee there 
for Memorial Day, 4th of July, and the one at the end of the summer. So, yeah, so they, they always expect there to be lines out the door, especially if it's a, if a, the weather is crummy and it's going to be raining. And I do live and worked in a beach town. So, you know, when the weather hits, the folks from the beach come running in and go right to the movie theaters. But, you know, this year's Memorial Day, it was, it was nice out. It was, it was the first nice holiday. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first nice summer day that we've had in a long time, because here in New Jersey, it's been ice cold or sweltering hot. So this was the first nice weekend. So it does make sense that not a lot of people went to the theaters, but there is nice But it's nice stuff. every Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> right. Well, for the most part, but you're right. So, But usually those numbers are huge because people want something to do. It's, it's The kids are finally home. People are off. There's, there's time to be wasted. And, and that used to be going to a movie. Now, there are some things that could be going on around that being the choice of movies that are out or the cost of going to your local movie theater, because I do believe uh, this is the highest it's been in a while. Yeah, there's a lot of potential factors. I think cost is certainly one of them. Uh, theater prices continue to rise. Mm -hmm. Tickets tickets are higher and higher in price. It's, it's a tough ask for, say, a family of four to, to drop a hundred bucks uh, to go see a movie uh, on any given weekend. And that could just that's be probably ticket prices yeah. alone. Like that's just getting your tickets. Cause I, I think a lot yeah. of theaters are dropping also like kids tickets, student tickets. Like it's just like pay your X amount of money to come see a theater, a, a movie. And that's it. And even if they do have kids tickets, it's still like 10 bucks to bring your kid to a movie. And that's, it's not cheap, but it's not, you know, it's not nothing. Yeah. It's not, not not cheap. Right. It's not expensive. Right. Well, I don't know. It depends on what state you're in. I mean, again, here in New Jersey. Depression. I mean, in, in New York and uh, L.A., places like that, right. uh, shit's crazy. But even here in New Jersey, the average ticket price, I would say, depends on time of day. But it could be anywhere from like 12 to 15 bucks. Right. Uh, you know, if it's an IMAX screen, you're talking about upwards of maybe 20 bucks. Uh, so it adds up. Yeah, because my local my local theater is an AMC, and we usually go on Tuesdays, which is, I think, roughly half price day, and we usually still, it's $7, so that means a regular ticket is $14. And if you get, you know, if you're, you're a traditional family of four, two $14 tickets plus two $10 tickets for the kids plus any of the concessions that they're going to want to bring in, it's going to run you probably close to, like, if not over... A hundred dollars, close to like one hundred and fifty bucks, to go to the freaking movies, and it's wild. That's insane. I'm not checking your math on that, but I I, I accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there, you know, there's a lot of other possible factors here too. A lot of people talk about the fact that streaming is so uh, big now. Mm -hmm. Of course, it has been for a long time, but uh, you know, more and more people are just saying, "Hey, I want to stay home. Why should I go out and see a movie?" Plus, like you said, for the cost, I'm already subscribed to Netflix. Right. Why should I spend another amount of money to see something else when there's a thousand movies I haven't watched? And right they here know at my the movies that are coming out this week, probably in about two months, they'll be in your home. Two months? Try three weeks. Well, yeah, I, I mean, was being <laughs> like. <laughs> the window is, I'm pretty sure the Fall Guy is maybe already right. uh, on demand. If, Which if, is if wild. Not, like any day now. Because that does like, it, it, movie companies are kind of like shooting themselves in the foot by doing that. But I guess they want to get that money while it's out there. Because remember, like I feel like when we were younger, I mean, this is dating me a, a lot, but like the movie would come out and then like, Something a, I don't want to do a year later, it would be on VHS. Yeah, that's like, correct. It would be You'd a have year. To wait a long ass time, <laughs> a long but I kind of ass time, but think about it. It would be in regular theaters for, let's say a good movie about a month. Then it would knock down because a lot of times we had like the second run theaters or they used to call them dollar theaters where maybe like six months later, it would be in a different style of theater, a uh, cheaper theater. Then it would eventually go to VHS or cable, depending on the year it was. So it would it would travel for a while, which I, I feel like that was better because it like it made the movie like it made me anticipate it more. Like now when a movie comes out, it's like, uh, do I really want to see that in theaters or do I just want to buy the Blu-ray, watch it on streaming, you know, wait for right. it to come you on? You know that you're going to have that chance as opposed to oh i gotta see it right now i definitely think that's a part that's a part of all this now i will say you know it's not all doom and gloom i mean we just saw uh dune part two which made tons of money right. 
Uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, last year, Barbie and Oppenheimer and um, this Mario movie. There's still movies that will make a ton of money, right. but it seems like they are getting fewer and further between that that people are mostly only willing to go out to the theaters for the really big yeah. tentpole must-see releases. We are seeing... Uh, there's very extremely positive tracking already for Deadpool and Wolverine. Mm. I saw pretty good tracking numbers for Inside Out 2, which comes out in a few weeks. So it's not like, oh, movie theaters are totally dead, but it, it seems to be these these movies that are still – I mean, you know, uh, the last Mad Max movie wasn't a giant box office no, success either. But it did, but it well. did better than Furiosa. Now, let me did. ask you, do you think it's the type of movies that's coming out? Because these all kind of are like in the same – range as like dune like that kind of like demographic so it's like we had the big movie so people aren't going to come out for everyone and like if you mentioned barbie barbie was like i not i guess it was a family movie but it was mainly towards our demographic mario was a family movie like those were big bring your entire family where a lot of the movies that you mentioned that came out so far this year fall guy mad max those are all kind of like like an action guy movie you know not to like come on. gender a movie or a bitch come movie. On. but you know oh. so you don't want to you know so, so it is a specific geeky style of movie that isn't drawing the full family out where like if is a kid's movie but like like mm. like we were saying mario and barbie are very like they were nerd centric also throwbacks and nostalgia grabs to bring people from uh, kids uh, nerds older geeks, et cetera, into the theater again, where it's like these, the movies that we did list are like the typical blockbuster action movies, which won't bring as many people out. So I think that's something you have to look for, not look for look at as well. Here's the real truth. In my opinion, mm -hmm. is that trying to understand why some movies succeed and others don't right. is a fool's game <laughs> Right. as, as, as people who have, have been again, trying to predict that uh, for several years now with the summer movie wager every year for fun. You can't. It's you can sit there all day and say, oh, this movie, but that movie or this is an exception of the rule or it's original right. movies. No, it's sequels. It's it, it changes with the wind. It, like yeah. audiences preferences are so just so impossible for me to understand. And it's also like, you know, in this it's clearly like, impossible for movie makers to understand, too, or they'd be making more money. And I do think it is harder now in this like economy and just mental space of like, because people are more depressed now, more, you know, they, they want something <laughs> that is like bang for their buck and will make them happier and, 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 and bring like them Oppenheimer, joy. right? A three and a half hour, movie. a feel good movie of, of the about summer the about the, the imminent demise of humanity. But you know what I mean? That it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a more of a difficult time than like, let's say 10 years ago, trying to figure out a summer movie wager. It can be, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's straight. It is. It is certainly worrying. I I do. I'm hoping that by the end of June mm -hmm. we're gonna see uh, Inside Out. Maybe Despicable Me. I is Twisters. Maybe isn't June or July. I can't remember. I, I want to say July, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's July. So uh, we still have a lot of the summer to go, right. and I'm hoping that some of these movies will come out and, and bolster those numbers. Like, I'm certain, again, nothing's going to stop Deadpool. I don't think any – I don't. I think Inside Out 2 is, and Despicable Me are both going to do extremely well. But, uh, you know, it's just – it is getting harder these days, and I – we had this nice little uptick mm -hmm. after – uh, after the pandemic, where it's where at least I kind of felt like, whoa, like you know, movie theaters aren't aren't dead. We're like seeing like numbers are numbers are looking better. People are going back to the theaters. This is awesome, and now it's starting to look like you no, know, the overall trend is still not that positive. Well, because it was like you know we were trapped inside, so it's like okay, we want to go do things, and then that kind of like dips to like okay, we don't want to leave our house, we don't want to go to a theater. You know, there's a lot of problems with a lot of movie theaters, too. Like, we are lucky here in the, the New Jersey area that we do have a lot of nice, well-upkept theaters. But you travel a little bit, even just into, like, Pennsylvania, Delaware. You know, their the theaters, like, I've been Ugh, to... The I, shit stage. The shit stage, as I call them. The, like, where, like, ceiling tiles are coming down. The, the seats are broken. Like, like there's a lot of things to take 
into all these numbers because, you know, a, a, a 12 screen cinema takes a lot of staff, a lot of money and a lot of just overall attentiveness to keep that theater going properly. And companies like AMC either don't have the money because they're funneling it up to their CEOs and stuff that they're not spreading it to their employees um, or they're you know, pocketing it or whatever. So it's, it's a lot of a um, lot of issues in these theaters that is just like, I, I don't want to go to a sticky floored 90s era movie theater when I could just go to my own home and buy a 75 inch TV. You know, I saw a 75 inch TV at Costco the other day for four hundred dollars. It was buy a hundred dollars of groceries, get this TV, TV for free. <laughs> and it was a pack of nine. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, so it's like I can make my own home theater experience. For most of these movies, yes, there are a lot of movies where I want to see it with an audience because it just makes the overall movie going experience better, you know, smelling the popcorn, the sticky floor, the people around you. But there are some movies where it's like my system at home is, you know, pretty damn good that it, like it'd be fine to see some of these movies there. Yeah, I mean, I will always personally mm -hmm. defend the movie going experience and I will never Almost in zero cases will I ever say that watching a movie at home is better in any way <laughs> for the, I mean, unless you, I mean, obviously there's the chance of having a shitty audience and stuff. There's, there's, you can have a bad theater experience, but in general, like the idealized version of it, or at least a halfway decent right. version of it, I always prefer, but, but even having, face with my gavel. but even having a yeah. shitty audience, that's kind of like part of it because it's taking the gamble. Not great. So, Sometimes. Not when like, you spend $20 well, no, on an that's IMAX the ticket. Right. But it definitely seems like movie theaters got to do something about this. Like they need to A, drop ticket prices, yeah. B, or do more. Like the half price day is a great option. That's that's something they are doing. But they need to do better, more stuff like that. They need to make the seats I, they need to make them better, but also that's part of the reason tickets go up is because they keep making them better. these luxury experiences. Right. So you got to, it's a tough, I'm not a, I'm not a movie now, man. I'm not a business mogul, but you got to find some kind of middle ground here to make this attractive. Let me people. ask you this question. What is the sweet spot for a movie ticket for you? Well, you know, I'm on the A list. So, uh, oh, you uh, little fancy boy. For, for, for me, I'm like, so I don't know. What does a, what does a movie ticket cost? That's nothing to me. It's meaningless. Right. That price. But uh, I, I I still balk a little bit when I see fifteen dollars yeah. at my local theater. I'm like, ah, for me, $15. like dollars, <laughs> seven dollars is like the I'll see anything price, you know. Yeah. Or even like when AMC was doing the five dollar see a random movie like that. At that price, I'll see a blind movie at five. Like mm -hmm. if it's good, bad, or whatever, it's five bucks. It's fine. Seven dollars, ten dollars is like my limit. I think for me, twelve dollars is like like twelve to thirteen. I'm like, okay, that seems that's perfectly right. reasonable. I'm fine with that. Um, anything lower than that, I'm like, getting away with right. murder here. But ideally, a list ten dollars is my easy. my limit. Like, I mean, not me. I've seen, I've spent a lot more on movies, but like, ten dollars <laughs> is the sweet spot for me. Like, I would go see a movie. But where does that exist besides discount right. days? That doesn't yeah, exist no. unless, except for like Ohio or something. Or like if you're going to a matinee, but like I've, I've noticed a lot of movie theaters or big chain movie theaters get away with not doing yeah. matinees by being like, oh, we're opening up at two today. I'm like, your matinees stop at two. Well, I, that's, I think it's because nobody wants to, there's not getting enough people. Right. To come Which is also wild to me too, because I remember, uh, I mean, it's going a little long, but I remember like movie theaters being like booked at like the morning and afternoons because it would be the not older anymore. crowds. It would be people, but they don't, there's not movies for them. They don't want to We see can talk movies. about this for an hour, but uh, we're not going to. Nope. We do have other stuff to get to, but we will continue to follow and track the box office numbers this summer. Hopefully they pick up. And if you're out there and you haven't seen a movie, go see Furiosa. Moral of the story, go support a theater, local or otherwise. Go to the movies. <laughs> local or internet what, like fly to some <laughs> another country and see a movie well like your mom and pop theaters versus like AMC. oh yeah, yeah 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 that still could still be local that's all you know you know how words have definitions no it's fine i'll explain it to you after the show. i go to movies I don't we are why do you why do you come to that place is it for magic yeah Folks, it's time to move on to our case today. <laughs> movies movies are passe. They're for the simpletons. We're today talking about a true art form for the intelligent mm -hmm. folks. Books. 
Today's case comes with us from the internet. You can find a link in our episode description. Our defendant today is Alex. Alex has a longtime friend called Veronica, who writes romance stories online, Veronica does, and is on the verge of getting one of those stories published. Now, Alex has never actually read any of Veronica's writing, it's just not really her cup of tea, until a mutual friend points out to her that there are many similarities between Veronica's latest story and Alex's real life. In fact, Alex finds that the entire thing reads like a dramatic reenactment of her own personal issues and relationships, and when confronted about this, Veronica admits that she used Alex as inspiration for her writing, but changed enough names and details so that Alex wouldn't be identifiable. Alex still feels wronged, though, and she's even considering taking legal action against Veronica in an attempt to stop the book from being published at all. As dual judges here on Geeks on Trial, it's now our job to determine whether the rights to Alex's life story are up for grabs, or if Veronica should put down the pen. Just, just straightforward, just straight simple. One. No, no, no puns. Sometimes no it's rhymes. just, a, it's just simple. Well, because this is a, this is a, like all of our cases, this is a real <laughs> legal case, and we there have real... to be professional lawmen yeah. while doing this yeah. legal case. I can't be reciting a, a freaking limerick out here at the at the nope. at the bailiwick, which I think is what they call the where the judge sits. You can't say that. I, I've I, I I gotta be. What was the word you used? Pro proactive. Proactive. So you have to use proactive. Your- there are legal ramifications here. There's real issues at stake. Mm-hmm lawsuits could occur. We're pre-lawsuit right now, so we're in deliberation. Sure. <laughs> we're in uh it's it's there's some kind of name for this for what this is is. A podcast. <laughs> Maybe we'll settle and not have to go to court. Mm. It's is what this well, is. Well but we are the court. But, no. Well yeah, we are the court, but we don't want to have to go to court. Oh. Aren't we in court right now? Well, you, have you yes. ever seen the opening of this show? We're at court. Yes, we are in the I mean, halls of the court. I'm at the food court. I'm getting anyway. Getting me some back Taco to the Bell, details. Some back Charlie's, to the details of the. Charlie's back to the details subs. of the. Back to the details of the case. McFlurry. Charlie's subs. Yeah, that's what you're going with. No, but that's a, that's the like food court place that I always know of. Back to the details of the case. Mm. The books and and the life stories thereof. Uh, so kind of an interesting tale here. There's definitely a discussion to be had about the legality of writing a book about another person. Right. Have you ever written a book? <laughs> <laughs> this show <just> sucks. <laughs> um, no, but like, have you ever read a book? Have you you know what books are? They have pamphlets, pages. I have not letters. written a book. Mm-hmm. I have read books. Mm-hmm. Which book? Uh, I, I, I have read, the uh, what's book that one? Of, Hop on Pop? The Book of Mormon? No. The Bible, yes. Big oh, band. that's how you pronounce it? How about biographies or, or memoirs? Are you a nonfiction reader? I am. I, mean, I, I would say a lot of, I mean, you I You are? I am. I do read a lot of, um, well, because I read a lot of like film books and, and, and history mm. books about that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of, I would say a lot of my book collection, I'm looking up on my bookshelf right now. A lot of my books are um, wow. like, like high like, up. It is. It's all the way on the ceiling. I, I staple them well, right you're to on the, the floor. Roof. Right. Well, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Can't afford chairs. So you have a patron. No. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I do read a lot of uh, like history books, uh, art books, uh, film books, stuff like that. What about you? I'm I'm much I'm really much more of a of a fiction guy. Mm. I don't tend to read biographies or anything really along those lines. The closest I might come is a you know maybe the odd comedian's book or That's a or, great or, book. Or, the Odd Comedian's book. I love it. <laughs> the Odd Comedian's book. But you know how sometimes uh, Aziz Ansari will write a book or right. something. Great, <laughs> it's great, not a, good, t- good, good, good. And it's it's not about uh, you know it's not necessarily a biography. Right. I mean, there are memoirs. Did you read like Tina Fey's uh, memoir or any of that kind of stuff? Let's see, uh, you read. Bossy Pants, I think it was. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the Office Ladies had a book, you'd be all over that. They one. actually do, and I don't. It's called the Office Ladies <laughs> book. I don't. 
I don't want to read that. Oh, uh, Pam didn't write it. Jenna Fisher doesn't have a, a tell she, all about the. She has a book about being an actress. I'm like, I don't. I She's don't an actress? That. Barely. That show is a documentary, though. Right. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Anyway, uh, but no, I, I, or I have a, there's a, I love, there's this author whose name I won't say because I don't know it because I don't remember it. Uh, You're but he wrote a great book, start. He wrote a book called Console Wars, which is about oh, yeah. the N- Nintendo versus Sega and another one that was about um, virtual reality. Uh, so, I, I, But, you know, I'm a nerd, so I really enjoy reading the, the accounts of that kind of thing. But I I'm not a, the kind of person who. I read a lot of plays. Shut the I, fuck up. I do read. I'm not the kind of person plays. who's going to the library and picking yep. up. A, <laughs> oh, let me learn about Abraham Lincoln today. <laughs> oh well, yeah. They have you movies. <laughs> they have movies for that with reenactments, which are fun. But are you yeah. like a? Are you like an on? Um, like you know, a lot of the books that we read are printed, are are from big publishers, True. are from you know, like well known authors. Um, I mean, the, the console wars, I don't know how well known that was, but it was a pretty big, it was book. a, it was a bestseller, yeah, but like, yeah. do you read a lot of like very independent online only books or like fan fiction type things that people no. create online? I, I, yeah, for, no. for me to read a book and I know it's awful because, you know, you should support your local eh. authors, but you know, I, I, local I, movie theaters. I, well, you should bring a your book. Local authors. They got to live next door. To if you. you need a place to read a book, movie theaters are great places. Go buy a ticket uh, oh, yeah. and bring your book. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's oh. rare that I read a, I don't know. It's rare that I read a, a non big mm. published book. There actually was a new, I was walking through target the other day because target doesn't sell DVDs or video game or Blu-rays anymore, but they sell a lot of books, which I find unusual that they got rid of. Target one. doesn't. I thought my Target has uh, still has some movies. I think they have like we used to. Our Target used to have like three aisles of like movies. Now mm. it's just like an end cap. But there's a lot of books. Mm. Target's big yeah. for the books, but there was a new Stephen King uh, mm. collection of horror oh, yes. books or horror stories. The color darker up. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what it is. I was going to pick it up, but uh, I didn't. But um, too heavy. It was like forty dollars. So I'm like, mm, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the that's the price you pay for going to Target, right? Um, so it's like I, I do well. do those kind of books and stuff like that. Like I do like anthologies and um, and short story books. I didn't those, ask. Are, those are. F- um, I was going I was going somewhere before you started talking about Target and you distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about with the the short story about books? Uh, oh, like yeah, reading our, things online. Yeah, it does sound like from the case. It sounds like the kinds of stories Veronica writes are the are of the subscribe to my Patreon, and the, he, she calls them spicy mm-hmm. romance stories. So it sounds like maybe the, or maybe not a Patreon, but like Amazon eBooks. Uh, I do think there's a there's a very big market right now. I don't know if you're aware of this. Mm-hmm. Of the spicy books for women specifically, you know like, about these spicy novels, like not so much like 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 love novels or like pornographic. Like, how far into the porn are we reaching? I'm not talking spicy? about Dune. I'm talking about the spicy novels. Yeah, the, basically Fifty Shades Spice. of Grey, basically glorified smut, right? Uh, for for women. Which I mean, those Which have been fine. around forever. They can have those them. kind of books have been around for eons. That's what like uh, sure the Fabio. Cover yeah, that's what I was just thinking of Fabio <laughs> being on the cover of these books. But when yeah, you call I gesture to myself, when right? Because you are one hundred percent Fabio. For the people who are people only see listening, me and they go Fabio, Fabio. right there. Um, I get a lot of times I get this. People will come up to me on the street and they're like, "Oh my god, I love your chest," <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Thank you, but that's not me. That's yeah. Well, because it's oftentimes you're riding uh, through a, a store on a horse. Dirty. The the wind mm-hmm. is in your your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so are these like so they're they're saying they're spicy. They're they're spicy think... novels. Does that mean they're like dirtier than like the novels that you would get at like a Barnes and Noble or like your local newsstand? If those, still exist? I think they can be. I think they can be in that realm. So yeah. just straight up smut. Like something you would get from penthouse forums. I don't even know. Yeah, I think there's levels to it, you know? But uh, yeah, it it could possibly be something along those lines. Now, I don't think that the story about Alex is that. I don't think that she wrote this and is writing down details of her friend's sex life necessarily. Mm -hmm. But she specifically mentions like a relationship with her father, some other things like that. So personal details that she has altered or adjusted, taken as inspiration, right. but done differently. Now, I write full annotations on videos from Pornhub. 
That's my new hobby. Oh, that's your hobby. It's my hobby. I okay. sell them. You bring that up just for. It's a book. It's my, it's my book that I'm writing. So you can head on over to uh, patreon.com slash smut books. I'm that's sure that's a, certainly that exists. To be a, that yeah, probably exists. Uh, it's a very, <laughs> it's not a very original no. name. Um, okay. So we know that this book exists. Right. Uh, let's put ourselves in Alex's shoes here. Okay. Ooh, it really, high, to be heels. honest, like to be honest, it feels like Veronica should be the defendant in this case, but Alex is right. the one coming coming to us with this case file. So that's just the way our format works. Mm-hmm. But anyway, put yourself in Alex's shoes. You find out a friend has written a book, and it's and it's it's about it's about Schneiven, right? And Schneiven is a radio show host. Okay. And Schneiven uh, also likes to produce uh, uh, music videos. Okay. <laughs> you know, right. I don't know. Right, right. No, no, I get what you're saying. I, I, I mean, what, what would, what's your reaction? You did, you never knew about this. They didn't approach you. You pick up this story. You're like, hold on a minute. Is this fucking play about us? That was, uh, I don't know if you know that meme. I don't. Uh, it's from the show Euphoria. It's a big, it was, it was oh. a big TikTok meme for five minutes. Oh. <laughs> the, all the Zoomers will like it. But you tell me, what's your reaction? I'd be upset. Upset? I'd be upset. I'd be a little perturbed because not all. Okay. So it would, it would come down to um, permissions for me and for the fact that like I'm sharing this information. Let's, let's say it had stuff that I shared with the person. Let's say I told Veronica things that people maybe don't know about me that might have ended up in the book, which seems like what's happening here with Alexa, Alex and Veronica, that, you know, th- there was information, stories inside baseball, if you will. Don't know what that means. It just sounds fun. That might, you know, that, 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 that people don't know, but it might have been a conversation they were texting back and forth, having a conversation about and it ended up in the book in some form or another. It might have not been 100% truthful, or it might have been like, you know, a grain of salt. It might have been the idea of the story. I'd be a little pissed off. I'd be a little Is there any part of you, I feel like there's, maybe there's just a small part though, maybe, maybe, or at least I think I might feel a small part of me that might feel a little flattered to think that. Oh, that you're like interesting enough. Yeah, my book, life yeah. is interesting enough that people want to read it. Now, let me tell you why I'd be a little upset. Yeah, I'd want a little payola. Give me a little of the mm. cut of that. You know, your the, your your story is based on my life. Well, now we're getting into two big pillars of this case. I think. Oh, it's huge! It's a huge pillar, massive. The per the awareness Mm -hmm. slash permission slash communication pillar and the legally is this okay regardless of that pillar. Now there is a thing with public figures. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the social network film, which was based on a book, which was called something else. Facebook. It was based on a Facebook. Oh, right. Of course. The Facebook. Famous website. You should really know Duh. what Facebook is. Well, I'm more of a MySpace guy. Still? Yeah. I, I use Friendster. Okay. The Facebook, for example, that book and that and the movie that it was based on it. Mm-hmm. But we'll stick with the book because mm-hmm. it was a book and that's relevant to our case. Oh. They, nobody asked Mark Zuckerberg, hey, is it all right if we write this shit down? Uh, nobody gave, sent him a copy and said, is there anything you want us to change? You, right. Do you want us to change your name to Schnark Schnuckerberg? Right. And, and that's because he is a public figure. And uh, as a judge, I know sort of a lot of the legal stuff right. about this. I've settled a few cases of this before. Right. There is a, there's precedence. There's, there's, there's an established precedent where if you are at a certain level in popular culture, uh, social awareness, you can't. Uh, you know, Elvis can't sue you were he alive for, for writing about Elvis Which because it's is. like, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? He's right. Elvis. Of course, everybody knows about Elvis already. Right. I mean, there's certain things you can't say or you can't use certain trademark things. Like you can't have, you know, the song in something or whatever. True. But you're right. It's, it, it, once you become a public figure, there is some public domain stuff that you're able to do. 
there is there's some gray area where the person could if they really think that what you're doing is um, you know defamation they could right. sue you for that or is taking money out of their pocket if they had a book in stores mm. or were about to write a book I think there is some things like that because it's taking away from their public story um, but yeah there's really not much you can do and we're see- actually we're yeah. seeing that right now with some biopics too like there's have you heard there's this whole thing back to black uh, Richard Simmons there's a Richard oh. Simmons biopic and it's supposed to be Paulie Shore. Is playing Richard Simmons. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and Richard Simmons sure. is like, I don't want Pauly Shore. And they're like, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's nothing like, you can do, Richie. Richie. Richie Rich. Pauly's in, baby. Pauly's in. We Richie's like out. We like him. The kid is in the mix. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to talk about Back Back to Black, which is the uh, Amy. Amy Winehouse mm-hmm. biopic. Also out in theaters right now. Not. Oh. <laughs> I don't didn't expect that one to do that well. No. But... Um, uh, yeah, I know. I think a lot of uh, like Winehouse fans are not right. They don't like the, her depiction in that. Uh, it helps if the person's not alive anymore. <laughs> it makes oh, hell, it you easier can do whatever to get away with it. But re- I don't think I don't know off the top of my head of any instances where a celebrity has successfully gotten anything out of uh, right. you know going after someone for something like right. that. I'm sure it's happened once or twice. Because here but, in the U.S. there are like not, not parody laws, but there's there's laws to like where you can, as long as it's all public knowledge, you can use that as it may. Because a lot of celebrities put all this information out there and and have their public lives public. So if you're taking all of that information that is just readily available in newspapers, Twitter, X, whatever, and, and just openly open knowledge from just googling this person. I'm pretty sure for the most part, it's safe to use. However, in this case, Alex is no famous person. Oh, Alice, Alex six is just a regular girl with a regular life that happens to be fascinating. (laughs) I'm I'm fascinated by how you're holding that gavel. Look, it was floating like that, like this. Oh, was I? Yeah. I don't know what I I didn't see. I thought you just had a flying gavel. Anyway, so, oh, oh. audio listeners, check out the video for uh, for some magic tricks. Oh, uh, uh, you want to see me make this gavel disappear? No. Okay, that was 3D. That was not a magic trick. Oh. You ever see those birds that balance on your finger? I used to have one as a child. You did. It was one of those stupid things that you get at like a like a museum gift shop. I still, I still love a museum gift shop. Who doesn't? But that's not what's on that's trial not, today. Oh, uh, books. We got to get back to the books. Uh, <laughs> as I said, Alex is not famous. Okay. Alex is a normal ass person. And I wish that we had access to this book and to Alex's life so that we could really make a full judgment. But we can only go on the people who are directly involved here in their in their their primary source takes. What is the, what's the line? I mean. How much is too much? Like, right. obviously, if the names are changed, maybe that's enough. But, you know, Veronica says, oh, I changed it so no one can identify you. However, a mutual friend did identify her. True. So it's not impossible. You might have to know the person. But, okay, so for me to think about, is Alex maybe telling too much information that like, you know, like, is this like, <laughs> is this like a story that's like, she's telling everyone about. And then at that point, it's not really hidden. But information. Now we're, is this victim blaming or something? Yes. Is this like, like <laughs> if I tell you a story, do you have the right to write it down and publish it? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, we should know. I know. I mean, again, like, like the, in terms of the pure legal mm-hmm. disregarding people's feelings of it. Right. Is it just right? I, th- I don't think there is – you can write whatever you want. They say write what you know. I mean, going back to the beginning of time and history, storytelling has been about things that people People experience in real life. You write a story about a parent. It's based on your own parent. It's based on your experiences with your kids. But was Veronica here for these stories? Did she actually experience them? Them? Did she actually experience them? (laughs) maybe maybe not does that matter does that make a difference i think it might because if it's just a story like so because what you're kind of explaining is like seeing stuff that you saw in your real life and writing it down 
may have not happened to you, but may have happened to somebody you saw. But you're mm-hmm. taking somebody's story that they told you. That's their story. Is it not? I mean, because but you are because you're of? right. Because if you're going into <laughs> like, oh, this is a story that your parents told you. Are you allowed? I guess you are allowed to. But they, t- I don't know. It's, it's a tricky subject because like they told you. Does that mean? He said, she said. He said, you know, do you have to start off everything by going off the record? Here's the here's the problem. There's well, a couple yeah. problems. There's no, you can't copyright words that you say out loud to someone. Oh. Like, again, just the cold, hard, unfeeling facts of reality. Mm-hmm. You can write down whatever the fuck you want based on what I say to you. True. And you don't owe you, anybody if, a goddamn thing. If you want to go out right now and write a story about me right. and that's based on my life, you can, you can do it. Right. <laughs> like, I can't – I don't think legally I have any grounds against you unless unless it's like the book is called Jonathan Essis, The Nazi Pedophile. Right. And it's and it's all – and it's no. <laughs> then I'd probably be like, hold on. I'd have a case here. Right. It's uh, Can you go by John, please? Not Jonathan. <laughs> sure. Right. Exactly. I don't usually use my full name. But I don't – but that's the problem, again, of not having read this. There's a lot of gray right. area in the middle where you can argue – Does this put me in a flattering light or not? But I think, honestly, the fact that the names changed goes a long way towards whether it's flattering or not is like, it's out the window. Well, and that's the thing, too, because as you were saying that, it's it's like, you know, how, where does Alex, Alex, I I keep on saying Alexis, don't know why, where does Alex, does Alex think their story is that well known that they're, they're like a person that is like famous that if Joe Schmo buys this book, they're gonna be like, Oh, that looks like Alex Smith. You know, are they going to think I like think, because I think for her it's more about she just feels personally offended that like a friend would do right. this and not inform her about it. That that she's like taking from her personal experiences without her permission. And also like, you know, like I was saying, maybe not monetary stuff, but like throw her a copy of the book. Let her know. Like, yes, you don't need to do all this, but if you don't, it is kind of scummy. It well, is- there's my next question. At what point do you, when do you say something? Is it after you've written a draft? Is it um, mm. before you write a word down? Or like, uh, hey, I'm, I, you know, the story you told me the other day, that seemed interesting. Can I use that as a jumping off point for my next novel, novella, story, whatever she's writing. I think, yes. I think you should bring it up, you know, go out for coffee, do something. And if they show any doubt, be like, okay. And then maybe still you can, like, just change it a little bit more. I think a lot of this depends on what type of friends they are, how good of friends they are. It says they've known each other for about nine years, mm-hmm. so, um, which could be a very long time. Right. If in dog years, especially. Oh yeah, dogs. Dogs. Those little bastards live forever. Um, bitches. And that's okay. a that's a scientific term. He's right. He's right. He's right. Uh I do I do think that at least once you have published and it sounds like the way she's been publishing these stories by the way is mm-hmm. sort of like a serialized story where I think it comes out right. in chapters here and there. It seems to me that once that first piece comes out to, uh, to me, like whether or not you should ask them for permission or inform them ahead of time, I'm 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 in, I'm in, the, in the middle on. Right. But once there's a thing you've written online, that's if it's to this extent based on that person, I think the least you should do is send it to them and say, "Hey, what do you think?" By the way, I sort of this was sort of inspired by right. parts of you. I think that's the biggest thing to me. That's like the fact that. She never mentioned it yeah. ever once. And, and like after it seems like multiple chapters of the story have been put out does make it seem like maybe she was trying to hide it. That's where I'm getting, you know, like that Veronica was like kind of trying to like, yeah, I'm going to use this story. I'm going to get this done, but I'm really not going to tell you because I think you might get, you might get upset. Like form. If I were to write a story about you, me not telling you means I think you're going to get upset about it. 
You know, like you, you like I would think if I was writing a story about you or, or like based on you or roughly based on you, I'd be like, hey, you know, check this out. You know, we're friends. I, I would be like, check this out. What do you think? Not thinking that you'd be like, uh, can you not? Can you like thinking that it would just be like, oh, cool. Thanks. You know, like an appreciation thing, like a, like a, you're just take a look because like by, you, by not saying anything before you're posting this online, that is kind of a, a scummy move. But now my other thing is these are online. Sure. She might be getting a few orders, downloads, whatever, but she's not known. It's not like she's getting a, a, a ton of, of orders. It's not like this is uh, in Barnes she and Noble. JK Rowland. Oh, you know, this isn't in like Barnes and Noble. So it's not like, you know, you know, one friend who is, it sounds like is in their friend group who actually like keeps up on Veronica's stories, saw it and was like, Hey, you know, this might be about you. This is a story that we might know that is about you. It's not out in public. It's not going to ruin said person's life. You know, it doesn't seem like anything like that. So that's where I'm like, I'm, it's a down the middle thing for me because like, you know, just tell your friends. If you are actually friends, tell your friends. Yeah. Now, Veronica did apologize after, afterwards, after being confronted. And she said that Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't mean anything by it, but she just really loved writing the book. Uh, and nothing was again identifiable as Alex, so that it was okay. Uh, and uh, according to uh, Alex, she says that the details are sensationalized. She also says that some aspects have been changed to make it seem more toxic. So maybe she's even worried that if mm. anyone makes the connection, they'll think things are true about her that are not true. Now that are a little more gross. At the beginning of this trial, this show, this episode. Yeah. They, we did find out that she wrote spicy novels. <laughs> is this, do we have the facts that this is a sexualized story? We of, don't know. I don't know how explicit it is, but it does mention uh, that her, fi- her she and her, the relationship with her fiance is, plays a part in it. Because that is, as, I was, as you were talking, I was mulling over some of the details. If this is a sexualized story and puts Alex and the fiance into sexual things oh, man. that I'm, I'm buying it might be a little crossing the line. I think it's not that only because if it were, I feel like that, that would have been brought, brought up. up. Like if it was like, yeah. you know, a story that was like, Oh yeah, me and fiance went to the park and then she added like, and we're doing it behind a tree, you know, like, like made it like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that is much weirder if your friend you know is writing about a, an analog of you having sex. That is definitely But you get what weirder. I'm saying with that. Yeah, that would be yeah. like a maybe take that's when I would be like maybe get a lawyer because then people might put two and two together that could ruin a career depending on what job you're doing. Like if 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 she wrote a sex book about her and it wasn't by her and maybe she's a teacher or something, that could end a career. You know, that could ruin somebody's sure. life. So that was sure. the first thing that popped in my head because it is a spicy, sp- it's a spicy novel. Yeah, I don't know how spicy this one is. It's just salt. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, this, yeah, this might just be a mild sauce packet. Right. right. So for you. F- fucking hot. <laughs> absolutely inedible. Um, yeah, there's a, this is, it's complicated. This mm-hmm. one is a complicated one for me. I Like I said, the... The legal aspect of it, pers- I feel, is pretty clear cut that mm. uh, speaking on that front, I don't think there really is a case against right. uh, Veronica. We should point out that uh, these this is not in the U.S., but we are judging them by uh, U.S. law because we're U.S. judges. Mm-hmm. So that's how it works. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but it's the it's the social aspect and the friendship aspect that I'm I'm still I'm still now, struggling to understand. I want to because a big part of the story is that Alex sought the 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 help of a lawyer. There is a lawsuit potentially going on. Mm-hmm. There there the word sue came up. I don't know who she is, but you know she might be helping one or the other. So like mm-hmm. if this was the case, if you found out that I. Or maybe somebody not as close as we are, like a, a secondary, we'll call them a secondary friend. Uh, if somebody like wrote a book based on you changing the name, would you 
go get legal help? Well, or no. would you be like, <laughs> hey, can you maybe not do that? Or like, I would, unless it was li- again, unless we're literally talking about like this. It's again, Jonathan Estes colon the racist Nazi pedophile. Right. Oh, you added something to that. I'm like in that case, then I right. guess I probably have to. But like, but but if it's just if it's like this and it's a book, it's not my name. I'm I might be upset. I might talk to the person, but I'm I'm never gonna I'm not gonna go for for legal action personally. No. That's just doesn't seem like. But it if, just seems like a way to be tied up forever and spend a lot of money, and it will. Well, suck. And that's the other thing too. <laughs> like monetarily, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to go get a lawyer, take this to small claims court. I don't know what kind of court you would take this to because it's not a big trial. But if you were writing this book, let's say you're writing a book, a story, whatever about me, and there Mm. was income coming in, would you be like, hey, I'll 10%, I'll give you some of the money that's coming in because it's about you. No? No, no. See, I would. (laughs) If I was using your story, I would be like, here's some money. But again, how much, it's just where do you draw the line? Because it's like, what what is someone's story? How how much of what you wrote was inspired by a movie you watched twenty years ago? How much of it was from your own family, your own friends? Uh, the coffee, the guy at the coffee shop you saw one exactly. day. Do you owe him some money? Like, well, that's just the thing. No... That's the argument about a lot of stuff. It's like I'll, everything that we have inputted into our brains is copying somebody else. How we talk, how we write, how we take photographs, how we make movies. Like we were all influenced by something and somebody else. So it's like, sh- yeah. you know, as long as she wasn't like, like you're right, like Smalix, like, you know, if she changed the actual name, there weren't like details like, oh, Alex was driving her blue car. And it's like, wait a minute. My name's Alex. I, I drive a blue car. <laughs> you know, yeah. if, if it was like inspired as, as they like to use in movies a lot, inspired by a true story. If that, if the, you know, like if you wanted to give them some kind of um, money. Or even just a copy that, of the book. Like, uh, you know what I'm it, saying? Like, but, well, sure, Short uh, that sure, uh, that's not worth that much. But if you're, but if that's the angle you're going for, then that's something I think that early on you would you would say to them like, do you want to uh, look being upfront? I'm using you as a source. What could you be like a consultant, right? And not, and and get a cut. But otherwise, if you had nothing to do with the actual writing, then yeah, it's I, I don't know. I don't but also, I guess too, like makes you sound guiltier too if you're offering money. Like you're just like straight up copy. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, in a sense. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I'd love to is, hear your verdict on this. This is interesting, but I, you know, it's a verdict for me, if you're going into verdicts now. Okay. I don't think anybody's at fault. I truthfully think it's well, down. Somebody has to be. By our legal system, oh. somebody has to be. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, here's the because- Remember, Alex is on trial for considering suing her friend. That's ultimately what we need to decide if she is guilty or not guilty of. You know, at the end of the day, Alex is not, I don't think Alex is guilty of wanting to sue this person because we don't know, we don't know what Alex does for a living. We don't know how much of this, like, we don't have the story in front of us. So we don't know if Alex, you know, if they- She's just, a senator, I believe. If Oh, then fine. Yeah. This will get you votes. You'll get right <laughs> in. You're good. But like this, we don't have the information that is like how much they actually used. Was it a lot of the information? Was it just, was it like just straight from word to paper, like, you know, from mouth to paper, the actual story? So I, I do, you know, I, I would say Alex is not guilty of <sighs> suing. Because it is a story that she said that, you know, that that this person did take and use for personal gains. And that is an issue. Um, You know, she has every right to go sue. Do I think she'll get anything out of it? No. In, In our court of law, I don't think this is worth doing. But I do think she has the right to go after this. And, you know, may it be stupid or not, I do not think she's guilty of taking her friend to court. Wow. Well, that's the show for today. Oh, oh wait a minute. There's turn? something. <laughs> now, I also, I wouldn't do this. Right, right, right. I This is, it honestly is pretty, oh, this camera just shook a little bit. This is, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> this is tough for me. I really am kind of split on this. I feel like calling Alex guilty feels too harsh. Right. Because I don't, 
I don't begrudge her for being upset by this. I completely understand that this could be a shocking and upsetting experience to discover that your friend was writing about you in such a way. Like, I, I, I get that that would be very unnerving in a way. Right. Um, but again, I, I, but I also don't know that I really think... I guess I do. I guess I do think that Veronica messed up a little by not being more forthcoming about it. I do think that is strange, but I also think that she has every right to do it. Yeah. But if if she's if she were, probably you would be a better friend to come forward and just say that you did this. It is. It's very weird that she'd had to find out through a third party. That's maybe the biggest thing about this. It's more so if, an invasion of trust. Yeah, if it, like if she had just told her, even if it was after the fact, if she was the one who told her, it, I feel like I, I would completely be on Veronica's side. And it's just the fact that she never came forward with it yeah. that's giving me pause. And I even now I'm going back and forth rare. I am going back and forth I, I, where I'm like, ah, because I, I don't think suing is is I think that's too far. Also, right. I think that's too far. <laughs> I'm really like, but like with my thing, it. you know, she does have the right to do it. Do I think she should have? No, yeah. but she has the right because, you know, it is an invasion of the privacy between two friends because now she has to think. Oh, is everything I'm telling Veronica going to end up in a story? Like, that's always something I, that's like has to be in the back of your head. <laughs> yeah, right. This would make a great movie, by the way, this whole thing. <laughs> Someone's write a book about okay, this. Okay, delete this episode. We're going to, uh, let's just cut this. And, uh... <laughs> and then, and then uh, two years from now, they sue us for right. <laughs> writing about their story without permission. We have to change the names uh, we used in the podcast. That's to be a different name change. <laughs> anyway, Smilexa, they can probably sue Veronica. us for this. Freaking podcast, too. Uh, we didn't get their permission for this shit either. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I think it's a moral obligation of mine as a judge. I do believe, I think I have to push for a mistrial, which means mm. that I need to enter my own verdict of guilty uh, of guilty for, for Alex. I do think, because I actually do think she kind of is in some ways guilty and in some ways not guilty. And I think it's just too... There's just too much going on here. There's a lot of gray area. I think we got to draw this one right down the middle and say it's too close to call that no, it's nothing here is out of line, but there's some shady business going on on both ends that I don't care for too much. Okay. I just think maybe it's not a, just not a great friendship overall, but anyway. <laughs> right. Because it is like, you know, that's why I was trying to like, she has the right to go sue. Do I think she should go sue? No, but yeah. tell somebody because you're right. The fact that she didn't tell, she had to find out from a third party is kind of shady. Kind of. Yeah, it's weird. Sus. That's okay. So, uh, <laughs> oh, Zoomers so, are like that too. So, uh, I think for my punishment, I have to, you know, I don't know. What's don't, Ronnie getting? Ronnie, I call you know, her Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie got to have a story written about her. I mean, I'm sure a lot of her stories are written hmm. already. She's already put her <laughs> stories out. But yeah, Ronnie has to have a, a, a completely made up spicy novel written about <laughs> themselves and, and Veronica, make, the racist pedophile, <laughs> some weird kinks and some, some things in there that she might not be approving of. So some, some non-approved uh, wow. spicy novels. Can we get someone like, um, is it E.L. Brooks or no, I'm thinking of James L. Brooks, <laughs> E.L. James, whoever no, the, the author James of Fifty Shades. <laughs> okay. James L. Brooks uh, writes and produces this novel. Yep. And it turns into an episode of The Simpsons. Sure. Yep. She has sex with Homer. Homer. Okay. I had to think for a minute to make sure I didn't say a child's name. All right. Um, well, they're all like <laughs> 70 at this point, so you can that's, choose anyone. That's true. So what do you uh, what so your it's, punishment? It's my job to sentence Alex. Mm-hmm. I have to come up with a with a sentencing of punishment for her. Mm-hmm. I guess let's see. Uh, maybe I kind of want to. I kind of just want to steal yours. <laughs> Can I just copy off of you? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's already having that happen. Maybe. Uh, maybe she's mm-hmm. maybe she's got a whatever the book is that uh, Veronica's writing. It, uh, Alex has to be the one who goes to all the signings and just public readings of the chapters oh, yeah. for folks and tell everybody, yeah, this is about me. Hmm? This is so unfair. She doesn't deserve this, no. but it's what I've decided and it's, it's what's going to happen to her. What happens is law. It's decreed. Sorry. 
Uh, hey, if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube, uh, we bet you have an opinion. You often do. You can let us know what you think. Leave a comment or email us, geeksontrial at gmail.com. Convenient place you can go to also submit your own geeky case. You got something, a dispute with a friend, a relative, an enemy, a lover, something that has to do with books, movies, stamp collecting, uh, I don't know, birdhouse building, whatever mm. geeky hobby that you're into. Email it to us. We'll settle it for you on the show. Or you can use the handy dandy link in our episode description. You can fill out a form right there and get it to us that way as well. Taxidermy would be a fun one, too. Do you have any taxidermy stories? That's pretty geeky. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash geeks on trial. Five bucks a month. Get episodes. Get new shows. Get get early access. Get all that jazz. And the more people that come on to the Patreon, the more stuff that you'll gain from that. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell whoever about this show because we need <laughs> more eyes and ears because we love attention. Now, <laughs> Sir Jonathan, where can people find you and your spicy novels? Oh, check me out. I got spicy novels online at jonathanestes.com. That's my name with a dot com after it. Uh, I write short form mm. novels at Blue Sky at Jonathan Estes. Very short. Uh, and you can sign up for my <laughs> newsletter. Excuse me. My newsletter. Uh, which is on my website, jonathanessence.com. It's all there. You can find it all. How about you, Ivan? Oh, you can find me over at ivanhan.com. You can also find me at youtube.com slash the snack guy. This week I am reviewing the Canadian all dressed chips. And you can find out what I think of those Canadian chips uh, uh, over at blue sky at Ivan Han and all over the internet. You can find me just by searching my name in that Google bar. That's Ivan Han. Well, a lot of our shit's public domain. You can write books about us. Yeah, please. Go. If you write books about us, fan fiction, whatever, just send it the to us. The Snack Guy story. We want to know. We want to know what's going on. And uh, I think that's it. Until next time, I'm Ivan Hahn. I'm Jonathan Estes, and that's another one in the books, baby. 